we rode that fine line of like white trash. We weren't in a trailer park, but you know, we were a couple missed payments away from being in one. <laughs> right, you were just on the fringe, okay. It's episode 238 of the Cassius Morris Show. Thanks for tuning in to this brand new edition of the podcast. Bit of a frog in my throat today. I don't know what's going on with my voice. I feel like it's a little weird. Feeling a little weird. Uh, trying to bounce back from it though. I think it's because I have no coffee. I've been too lazy to go to the damn grocery store for the past three days. And I think my body is basically going into shock without the caffeine. I feel like my face ba is barely moving. Uh, definitely got to get on that caffeine train again. But damn, it's, it sucks to have a quote-unquote addiction like that. It's so weird how we're conditioned in our society to low-key be addicted to so many things but not even really realize it. I feel like most people are addicted to sugar, uh, caffeine for sure. I'd say a lot. the vast majority of the population is probably addicted to a lot of people are probably addicted to a lot of things, but it's, it's weird. We're, we're sort of uh, programmed in a strange way to seek reward from from ingesting things and uh, and have it be part of our routine. Creatures of habit is what we are, but I'm not going to go off on a tangent about that. Today's guest on the podcast. Now, this is super cool. Really happy to be joined by Uncle Hack on today's show. Of course, the founder of podcast and YouTube group, Danger Cats, which is, they started as sort of a sketch comedy group. Now they've evolved, like I said, to having a podcast. They have tons of live shows, which are really, really cool all across Canada. And just an awesome operation of super cool cats, pardon the pun, I hate to say it. Uh, and, and just somebody I've really wanted to connect with for a while. You know, I think it's, there's something to the whole power in numbers idea. And I feel like if you really want to help lift up a scene or create more of an established scene i feel like it's sort of on the people in that scene to band together and really bring it up together that you know i think i mentioned this on the last episode that's one of the things i've really been struggling with is sort of operating on on, on an island i'm oh, sorry i almost had a stroke there operating on an island and sort of just being like a one-man operation uh sort of alone with the exception of people on zoom and I really decided in 2022, that's just, that's not the way I want to do it, man. I want to get together with more people. I want to get back out to more local shows, get part of, you know, the music scene again locally, the comedy scene again, and, you know, really try to take this to the next level with everybody collectively. I think it's, there's something really cool about that. I was doing a lot of that in sort of 2019, and but I almost felt like I got to a point where I was doing too much local stuff, and it got to the point where... A lot of the stuff I was maybe starting to get involved in wasn't really even relevant to anybody who wasn't local. So I, I really drew it back, but I think it's about reaching that happy medium, doing some of the stuff, incorporating it, and uh, like I say, getting together and, and reaching that next level. If you do enjoy what you see on this episode of the podcast, please click that subscribe button, whether you're tuned in on YouTube or our audio platforms, that's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher Radio, people all around the world have been tuning in on all of these platforms. I really appreciate it, man, and I love reading you guys' reviews to let me know what you think think of this podcast so make sure to go leave those reviews check out those episodes share it with your friends and before we jump into this episode with uncle hack which by the way features a brand new segment which i'm going to tell you guys about in a second there's a little piece of news that i wanted to talk about right off the top and when is there not a piece of news about joe rogan now this came out this was last week word came out that a group of 270 quote-unquote doctors, I'm going to use that in air quotes, co-signed an open letter to Spotify demanding that they take action against Joe Rogan and his podcast for promoting what they call COVID-19 disinformation. Now, this letter started circulating around. It obviously got tons of mainstream media attention. As Fox News reports here, a lot of people in this letter were calling Joe Rogan a menace to public health, uh, stating that everything he says is pretty much a lie about COVID-19 and promotes distrust in scientists and the mainstream media. Now, as this petition began to circulate, needless to say, it got a lot of attention and people started looking over it with a fine-tooth comb. Now, one of the big findings about this petition is evidently that most of the major signatories were either not direct medical providers 
or are currently not legally permitted to practice medicine on their own. Now I find this sort of comical and pretty ironic because when you look at the episode that Joe Rogan put out with Robert Malone, of course, super controversial episode discussing different theories about COVID and the vaccines, one of the major criticisms about Malone was that he was part of a group of doctors where many of them did not currently practice medicine and he's not currently practicing in a certain capacity. So that was one of the big criticisms about that push from that side. And isn't it sort of ironic that the side that's pushing back against it not only has a v far less doctors and, and people signing compared to the thousands that Robert Malone was working with, but they also have the same thing that they were calling out as a negative thing when it comes to not currently practicing or not being able to legally currently practice. I find it hilarious because it just sort of highlights the hypocrisy on both sides. That's, that's one of the insane things about this, this crazy, militantly politicized world that we live in. Both sides, it, it seems like fact, there's a blinder on when it comes to facts. And people are so convinced that their view is right and that they somehow need to convince you that they're right or maybe explain it in the right way to prove that they're right, that facts sort of seem to have gone out the window and there's this weird tunnel vision thing that people have now where this just, it doesn't matter, I could show you mountains of evidence to the contrary and this goes for any opinion. This goes for people who are you know pro-COVID, anti-COVID, they think it's fake, they think it's real. It doesn't matter what you think. People are just like a pit bull uh, with a bone or like biting a human or something when you can't get it to release. They're like a rabid dog nowadays with their opinions and their takes. And it's, it's super, super crazy to see how committed people are to just making others feel like, or, or trying to convince others that they're right. It, it's such a strange world we're living in. But I, you know, I got to say, I commend Joe Rogan and here's why. Joe Rogan does not really have to be involved at this point in anything he doesn't want to. He says it himself. He's got fuck you money. And this is his words, not mine. He's got fuck you money and it would be wasting it if he didn't say fuck you. And, it, you know, obviously since he says that the straight from the horse's mouth, this is what he believes. But I sort of see that. And when you really think about it, Joe Rogan got paid over $100 million for his podcast from Spotify. All Rogan had to do from then on is deliver a show. There's no prerequisites to my knowledge. Maybe there is in the contract. But as far as we know, there's no prerequisites as to what you have to talk about or not talk about. So Joe Rogan, if he had opposing views on COVID, it would have been just as easy for this dude to take the $100 million, do his show every single day or however often he does it, and just say whatever the media wants to hear and continue to be sort of this corporate darling. If you didn't notice... Joe Rogan was really almost like a corporate darling up until this point when he started being anti-Biden and anti-COVID uh, vaccine, or, or at least, I, I'm not sure if he's anti-vaccine, but he's definitely questioning it at least. And again, that's an example of our militarized or militant sort of political ideas nowadays. Um, my, my reflex, even though I don't believe this, was to say that he's anti-vax just because he's questioning the vaccine. Um, you know, just because you're questioning the vaccine, that doesn't mean you're anti-vax. Even if you don't have it yourself, that doesn't necessarily mean you're anti-vax. There's people who don't get it for different reasons, um, but they're not against it for other people. But the point is, and what I'm trying to say is that he could easily just keep his mouth shut, say what people want to hear and run away with his hundred million dollars. He could have taken the money and ran. He doesn't need to be doing this. However, for his integrity in himself and the honor he wants to keep or whatever it may be he's choosing to question these things that he knows are going to get him in trouble he's risking a deal with a company who's just paid him hundreds of millions of dollars who's putting him on a massive platform who's getting a lot of kickback for this he's weathering the storm spotify's weathering the storm all in the name of having some form of open free-thinking mass media outlet. What, what you think of Joe Rogan's opinions is pretty much irrelevant. I think this is a positive thing because we need a news source that is not financed 
by the people who are trying to control the agenda on that show. We need a news source that is not tied into big business, that is not tied into big pharma, as much as we know at least. Again, we don't know everything that goes on behind the scenes, but as far as we know, there's no investors that are paying for the Joe Rogan experience that are paying to have a certain agenda pushed. And this is something that I think is very important. I think it's closer to how mainstream media started. Um, I think that these stations, CNN, Fox News, whatever, I think, you know, back in the, the 90s, I think it made a lot more sense based on what I've gone back and learned about those periods of time and that it was a lot more truthful. But for these sources to band together and say that Joe Rogan is causing distrust in the media and distrust in the scientists, I think is hilarious because mostly what Rogan is doing is just a guy asking questions. He does have some strong opinions. I don't really watch his show all that much, but from what I see about what they get mad about, a lot of the time he's just asking questions. And I don't think Joe Rogan is causing distrust in the media. I think the media is causing distrust in the media. I think that they've been caught out on hundreds of lies throughout the years. The internet is vast enough that people can find out about these lies, and it's really not that compelling or really fooling anybody for them to continue lying in the same methods. And I think that the vast amount of misinformation that they've shared, whether it's on purpose or unknowingly, and a lot of this having to do with medicine and COVID, I think that is what is creating distrust in the media. I don't think people questioning the media is what's creating the distrust. I think just knowing that they're full of shit, you know, 50% of the time is probably what's causing the distrust in these places. And, and uh, so I commend Joe Rogan. You know, I think we're watching sort of a live action attempt at character assassination from many different angles right now. And I applaud Joe Rogan and Spotify for standing up for what they believe in, what they think is right in the name of the truth and in the name of the right that we supposedly have of freedom of speech. And I say supposedly because I don't see much evidence of that actually existing nowadays. Um, if somebody forces you to sort of be fired for speaking your opinion um, or, or things along those lines or be canceled, whatever the case may be, I don't really see that as freedom of speech. I sort of see that as something different. And we can we can all read into that uh, and, and come to a conclusion on that ourselves. So we're going to jump into this podcast with Uncle Hack. Again, I really appreciate him coming on. There's a brand new segment in this episode at the end where I pick three insane facts that I found on the internet and we do sort of a wild card reaction to them. We talk a little bit about NFTs, talk a little bit about uh, Sasha Baron Cohen as a little bit of a teaser and this was a fun segment. So hopefully you guys enjoy and let's catch up with Uncle Hack. What's going on with you? I know you've been, I mean, it feels like everywhere I look, I'm seeing you, whether it's Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, you're I mean, you and the Danger Cats are everywhere, man. I mean, talk to me about what's been going on as of late. Uh, a lot of comedy, man, I and mean, it's been great. A lot more stand-up. Uh, that's cool <laughs> to know that, actually. It's like yeah. uh, that it's, it's, it's slowly, it's like a cancer. You can't kind of, you can't get rid of it now, which is phenomenal. It's a malignant uh, comedy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So yes. how long have you been doing this, man? Like, uh, at what point did you jump in and, and start with the Danger Cats and everything? 2017, I decided I was convinced after uh, watching some Oilers games with a few friends that I made up here. And uh, they were like, dude, you should start a YouTube channel. And just were hounding me about it, about commentary on hockey games and, and shit like that. So I, I was like, yeah, I don't feel like putting myself out there for it to flop. And it finally got to the point where I was like, you know what, maybe I will. And then I did like a spoof hockey tutorial type video and put it online and it did okay. It got a few views. And then like my second or third video went like insanely viral. And mm. it, it, yeah, it just kind of took its own self and ran with it. I, it's, it was really weird. It was still, it was like pre almost where they're like, everybody was doing something online, you know, right so before the big, big boom. Yeah. Yeah. I just got in right before and I kind of created something and it just started to manifest itself slowly. 
So what was the second video that you put up that that first went viral? Oh, I was just acting like your typical Albertan in the oil patch. And I put I had my coveralls on. I was an operator at the time and I would just listen to people like whine and bitch and complain about politics, you know, mm. prices of oil, uh, you know, liberal type agendas. And I thought it was, I would laugh. I would just laugh because I found all of it funny. So I just took most of that and just did it in a more like fucking hey how the fuck are you type like it was like more red deer ish <laughs> right a little more red deer and, and away from edmonton <laughs> yeah 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 i also grew up in like small town alberta so it was like i i understand those that type of personality i grew up with it it's a part of me so it's like fun to make fun of it and also you know it seems like smaller town like rural canada doesn't really have a voice so it's kind of cool mm. to be a voice for those people in a way not all of them obviously but <laughs> yeah but no a percentage of them so so you were growing up sort of in the small town and and yeah i, I see what you mean because it seems like in places like alberta or, or maybe anywhere with small towns there's sort of like a personality type that sort of becomes developed and it seems like half of the population can see it and half of the population sort of is that personality type so you you were you had some of it but you could more so identify it yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it's my buddies, how we acted, how I acted, looking back and just like seeing what influenced us and and taking that and even like going back home and, and bumping into guys and chatting with them. It's like, oh, this guy's a, a character. I can make this right. guy into a character. <laughs> So you were you were known basically for for making commentary like were you the funny dude on the job site who was always cracking jokes or was that more like with the NHL and, and on the job site you were quieter? Uh, I kind of worked alone for most of the day so I was okay. always on the phone with friends and like my cousin's a uh, big farmer and uh, so he'd be in, in his truck all day so he'd be just talking chopping it up having a laugh and uh, yeah it just kind of I don't know, I'd get bored. And then I bought a GoPro and I started just fucking around with the GoPro. And <laughs> then it just kind of started happening more and more. I was just producing more content, even while I was sitting on my ass at work. And there was, I don't know, there's just like hard truths that some people want to avoid. And I would just say those hard truths that we all know, but nobody talks about, you know? Hmm. Do you think you would have ever tried to make videos if you weren't speaking from that perspective like do you think you would have come up with something different or do you think that it was really the unique perspective that that made you interested at all uh, i would fuck around from time to time like remember when that uh oh there was like a dance challenge that took over the internet where it was uh my boo you remember that song my boo okay i remember the song yeah and then like they did like the dance challenge to it mm -hmm. I, I would do like those and just put it on my personal Facebook. So then like my friends back home would see it and then have a laugh and be like, just be like a way to like connect us all. And, I, and I'd just like troll online all the time, just with my friends. So, and just like fuck around and try and get like uh, the, the fellas going, or if I was coming back home, I'd, I'd fuck around and get everybody uh, kind of heated or excited, or I was always trying to do some, some horse shit. <laughs> Always you're just playing around. And and was comedy yeah. in the picture at this point or, or was that something no. that came in later? Okay. I've like toyed with the idea of stand up for almost like, oh man, probably 15 years. Wow. And I finally got the balls to pull the trigger like right before the pandemic hit. <laughs> man, me too. Funny enough. I, I did the exact same thing. It wasn't oh, 15 really? years, but yeah, I was, I was procrastinating for like six or seven and I pulled the trigger. So you did it and then everything shut down. Yeah. Oh man. That was tough. So how many times have you gotten to go up? Uh, I've, whenever I can, I, I do it. So, uh, for the past, like whatever, I, I would comfortably say that I have probably been in comedy for a year, just from shutdown opening. I, I just say a year cause it seems, you know, that just seems like the number, <laughs> but okay. I've been up as much as I can. Like any open mic I go to, uh, I, I try and get up and work out some material as, as much and often as I possibly can here. What was the, uh, the nerves part? Because for me personally, I was like, what if I get up there and, and, and the, all the entertainment is on me and I can't 
deliver. That was my like uh, catastrophic scenario. What was yours? I just really wanted, I didn't tell anybody like my first open mic. I didn't post it online. I didn't say anything other than uh, my girlfriend, uh, one of my best friends here, and then another one of my best buddies here. I said, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to give it a shot. Uh, you guys are the only people I'm telling. I'm not telling, because I want to know, can I go into any room and be funny? I can. Right. Be, I know if I brought people out with the brand, no matter what I say, I've kind of won them over and they're just maybe there's excitement or there's you know there's already i've already won their approval from my comedy bits online and in and, and sketches and shit like that so exactly. i want to know like can i go and be funny for everybody no, maybe not everybody but can i make people laugh with uh, right. the shit that i wrote so that was like the biggest thing is like not so much the approval, but it's more so, am I, am I funny to a random group of people? Yeah, it, it's hard to gauge whether or not you're funny if you bring 20 friends, because that's the thing, they they want to yeah. see you succeed. They're, it's not like they're going to sit there with their arms folded and, and let you die up there. Yeah. It's yeah. tough. So I, I, I threw myself to the wolves, and uh, <laughs> I bombed hard. <laughs> oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, I don't think it's really po- – I mean, it might be possible, but I think the chances of doing good your first time are, are so, so rare. I w- my, mine was super misguided. I went up there and did some sort of, like, Trump immigration joke at the time or something, and I was like, this is going to go over well uh, on, with the white Ave audience. Uh, yeah. Did not. <laughs> it definitely did not. It was – I literally got just deadpan faces just staring at me. Um, and it was, it was really weird, but no, I did the same thing, man. It was no social media, no telling friends, just going up. And I mean, I don't know if, if you found this after, but I think that's the best way. Yeah, man. I think that bombing taught me more and, you know, uh, it made me have to go back to the drawing board and like, oh, okay. I, I was able to see everything I did wrong. I'd rather see that. Mm-hmm. And then I know not to make those mistakes twice rather than go up there and slay a room and then i got in my head like oh that was easy and then when that time comes down the road where i fucking bomb hard and then maybe my ego gets hurt or something stupid along those lines uh i i got it out of the way early you know Mm -hmm. i ripped the band-aid off early i got the whole experience of just like a whole room being dead silent (laughs) right so such a weird feeling yeah so now if it happens in the future, I'm, I'm totally prepared for it. Mm. No, that makes a lot of sense. So, so I mean, in, in terms of like making the, the segments and bits for Danger Cats and stuff, do you find it more challenging to do that or more challenging to craft the stand-up ideas? Uh, I would probably say, uh, boy, they're both pretty difficult because now instead of just ranting on topics, I want to take it more to a comedic uh, level. And how can I play this in different angles? So they're both very challenging, but uh, stand up to me, I find is is a new, fresh challenge, and it's more exciting. And uh, speaking of Nick McQuick, there he is. What's up? What's up? How's it going? (laughs) The man himself. Holy smokes! Look at that. You were a little kid, now you got like fuzz on all of your face. I grew a pube finally. I know it's it's long overdue. (laughs) It's delightful. It's wonderful. You're looking good, man. You're looking good, buddy. It's, it's good to see you. Yeah, the baby's doing, man. I'm fucking loving it. <laughs> we got twins. Come check mine. <laughs> <laughs> Puff it up. Matt, seriously, to this day, I met you in a comedy club. I've never seen you on a stage. You hit me up. I will put you on a stage. I will do that, brother. I will do that. And I have gone up. As I was just telling the listeners, I have gone up. So yeah, pop I'm the cherry t- at least. <laughs> when did, how old were you when I met you? 17. Jesus, man. 16. Too young to be working at a comedy club. <laughs> yeah, I'm too young to be hanging around with me. <laughs> <laughs> the stories, though. You got stories for days. Oh, do I ever, son. Do I ever. But we'll save that for my episode when I'm on your thing. Yes, sir. We got Nick McQuick coming soon, folks. So you guys are going to have to stay tuned for that one as well. We got we got a lot up the sleeve. Yeah, that's how you, that's how you get booked on the podcast, if anyone's wondering. <laughs> you yeah. just break, break into am, another guest's house. Interviewed. Yeah, <laughs> you get an immediate booking. Yeah, fucking sweet, <laughs> awesome, dude. Are you talking about uh, classic rock? You talking about Kiss? Not yet. We might, we might get there though. I know that we we have the the heavy metal in common. 
Oh, fuck, do you ever, man. Mm -hmm. Do you ever. All day. One of these days, you should come down here and do uh, our podcast. Absolutely. I'm game. I'm game. Yeah. You should check it out. It's a blast. Yeah, man. Anytime, dude. Definitely. Yeah. It'd be an honor. There's a link to it in the description for the listeners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. WW. <laughs> <laughs> make more work for you. <laughs> okay, man. Well, I got to go. Uh, I don't have pants. Oh, well, you should have stayed in that case. No. <laughs> There we go. We got a cameo as well, folks. That's this is, there it is. It's, it's funny that you brought him up because uh, I was just like, uh, I, brought, I said, like, oh, I got to do an interview. And he's like, oh, what for? It's like uh, the Cassie S'more show. And he goes, oh, I know that kid. Like, oh, <laughs> there you go. We're, we're doing some writing today. And he's like, I was like, well, fucking pop in randomly. I'll text <laughs> you and then just jump in. Then I know. And then I brought him up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing I didn't say I watched your episode with McQuick. It was the worst episode I've ever seen. That would have been uh, anticlimactic with him standing right there in the background. <laughs> oh, he's been, he would have been out of the he was out of the room anyways. It would have been better because then we could have ambushed you. Could have oh yeah, but in that case, yeah, maybe we should we should run it back, do an edit. <laughs> 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 so one thing I want to know is I know you, like Danger Cats, it, it really evolved from like just you to to a bunch of different content. Uh, what what exactly were like the moving pieces that that got you to get like your own location for this and, and a bunch of people involved? How did you take it to that next level? Persistence, I think, in just mm -hmm. in my head, I had a vision of like where I've always wanted this to go. And I just, you know, it is as gay as it is thinking about it and thinking about it and manifesting it and working towards it. And, you know, if you're willing to make sacrifices and you're willing to, you know, uh, not always be the cool kid on the fucking block and, uh, you know, uh, maybe your lifestyle has to change a little bit and, and just waiting for the right people to, and putting yourself out there. And, and sometimes they come, sometimes they go, but right now, I think is this has been the best position that we've ever been in. Uh, I'm surrounded by like super funny guys, guys that are, you know, uh, committed to the craft. They're always willing to produce new shit. They want to do more, more, more. Like, let's do a live stream. Let's do this. Mm -hmm. Let's do more clips. Let's do more sketches. Let's write a TV show. Let's let's keep throwing shit at the wall and see what sticks. So it's nice. Uh, it did take a while. It took me quite a while to get to this position. I mean, like, fuck, probably three years of it was just pure chaos and a cocaine fueled haze. And then finally getting sober and realizing like, oh man, the mistakes that you made and opportunities that you missed because, you know, you just couldn't, put the bottle down for a night or you, you know, you couldn't put your nose to some fucking porcelain for an evening. It just, I don't know. I just seen like a lot of things slip through my fingers now. And I don't want that, you know, it's like trying to catch water with a wicker basket. It's just never going to work. And then now that we've like, I've cleaned up my act a little, not so much the act, but the off stage pre uh, activities. I, I'm right. pretty much sober now. I'll have a few beers every now and then, but I think that had a lot to do with it and having an, a different outlook on where, where I seen this going. And it started to attract different people because then they see me acting the way I do on the internet. And then immediately they, they like, I've, I've met numerous people after, um, well, it just like in these past couple of years where I, I'm now in this mindset that, it, it was almost refreshing to know that I'm not this obnoxious asshole that's going to sit there and yell my opinion in your face, that I'll, mm. I can talk to you as a normal human. But uh, the online antics are out of control, crazy, and that's how I would like it. Hmm. So did you feel like you were more like that guy online before, or, or was that not the case? In terms of what? In, in terms of in real life, like, were you more obnoxious when you were using a lot or, or was it just an issue of, of not being able to think as clearly? Uh, I, I, I like to have fun. It's not like uh, I would go out and just disrupt a whole room for the sake of having attention on me or anything like that. Like I'd go out and have fun and just be hammered and 
acting a fool or I could, you know, when you're drunk, you're a little more loose with your lips and you say shit that you don't actually mean and it, and it could affect your future or affect the relationships with other people. And uh, I just seen that. I just seen like I was turning into somebody that I actually fucking started to hate. <laughs> That, that, that's it's crazy that you're able to look in the mirror, though, and, and say that, because, I mean, knowing so many comics, it's like and anybody who knows the business, it's almost like the backbone of the business is like getting fucked up. Essentially, it's 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 a huge part yeah. of like what makes the business happen. So is that was that a challenge or was it that the people who you attracted, the new people were so good that it sort of took you away from that? I'm pretty stubborn in my ways. So it's like once I say something and I think think a certain way and be like, no, I'm not drinking. And then right. there's no convincing me otherwise. So I think that helps just personality wise. And then, yeah, as, as that started to develop itself, it started to, you know, a different people were coming into my life and they're just seeing like, oh man, okay, this guy's kind of put together a little different than I initially thought he was. And I can hold a conversation with him. I can joke with him and where if I was hammered, I, you know, drunk people are fucking annoying. It's, it's, so, uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think it has a lot to do with that now. It's just I'm easier to deal with. And, you know, uh, you don't have to worry. Like, you know, my business partners don't got to worry. Like, oh, is he going to fucking have one of those escapades where he's fucking drunk and high till four or five in the morning? Are we going to have to deal with the come down tomorrow? And he's grumpy and being a prick for fucking no reason because he decided to have too much fun. So it's, mm. I think it's definitely helped relationship wise with other people, whether it be business or even friendships for sure. And even, you know, uh, that, that type of behavior kind of fucked up my past relationship and, you know, <laughs> right. so, you know, it, it takes a good breakup to kind of put a man down deep in the fucking deep waters. Or That'll deep, do it. Goes, yeah, dude. And then you kind of like, well, what the fuck? Why is this bitch leaving? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> what and I then do? you figure it out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man, that's yeah. interesting. So in terms of Danger Cats, like covering footage of even like wild happenings and things like that, um, what do you think is the craziest thing that you guys have ever covered on your platform or the wildest instance? Uh, that I've seen with my own eyes? Yeah, or, or I mean, or that you were involved in maybe indirectly. It could be either or. Uh... I've seen a dude one time when we were at, uh, well, I won't say the, the, the place, but we were at a, we were at a music festival and we were just kind of going around and promoting the brand and giving out merch and shit like that. And one guy I watched take a beer spear and, uh, he shot it up his ass. Oh he whole, my yeah. God. He shot a whole beer up his ass and <laughs> it gets better. The nozzle on the end of the beer spear shot up and went it up into his ass. Oh, so, was this dude on he, jackass? Like, what, what's this dude's problem? I don't know. He was just like, one guy said he was going to do it and then uh, bitched out on it. And then his buddy got annoyed and he'd be like, you are such a pussy. <laughs> and he's like, do me. And so they fucking, and the nozzle went like up. And so he's like, oh, I feel something weird. He went into his camper and like, I guess kind of pissed the beer out of his ass and then the nozzle came out and he's like, you're not going to believe this. And he came and grabbed us and he goes, I just, I just shitted that out. <laughs> oh my gosh. What a champ. He brought it to show, like show and tell he showed you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was one of the, that was probably like the first thing that comes to mind that we've like filmed and put on the internet. That's hilarious. I, that that must have gotten a pretty comical reaction. I mean, is, is it usually a good, a good reaction or is it usually like you you should? I, I mean, even in the beginning, like was it like you guys shouldn't be posting this or was it like this is hilarious? Post more. Uh, it was like a 50 50 blend. So you'd have people being like, this is outrageous. I can't believe people act like this. And it's like, ah, that's just that's just fucking dudes being dudes. <laughs> Pretty much, man. It's, it, I, I think it's, it's, it's interesting because it, it looks like the authenticity, it seems to be such a big part of content like this. And, and like what you mentioned about not being like the cool kid on the block and stuff. Like, do you think that a lot of people approach it the wrong way, trying to be too serious, perhaps? Because it seems like you've found a lot of success just simply from not taking yourself too seriously. 
Yeah, I think that uh, I think a lot of people have this perception that you need to be a certain way when you're putting out content. Like, uh, you know, you see the, some of the biggest YouTubers now and it's always got to be flashy watches, big cars, big mansions and stuff like that when it's not even that relatable. And I'm not interested in those types of things. So I don't want to post about that type of shit because it's I don't know. To me, it, it means nothing. Um, mm. And I, I feel like a a lot of people, once they get into this like content creation, that they're not actually truly being themselves, and you can see right through it right away. You know, like I'm, yeah. for just from my upbringing and stuff like that, like we, I, my family is like always cracking jokes or ribbing one another. So we, we were always like a really silly, not so serious family. Uh, we weren't like wealthy, but we weren't dirt like dirt poor. We like rode that just like that fine line of like white trash okay so, lower yeah. middle class or yeah like a lower middle class like single mom high class almost. okay like yeah uh, I, that's probably the best we weren't in a trailer park but you know we were a couple missed payments away from being in one <laughs> right you were just on the fringe okay <laughs> yeah dude <laughs> so it's just oh, like okay. that yeah, that that type of like upbringing, you just like we used we just used humor to get through the the hard times, and that just kind of molded me, I guess. Hmm. No, that makes sense. Did, did your family get it at first? Like when you told them, like I I want to expand this, I want to make this like a big thing, and what it is today. Did they get it or were they resistant? Because I don't no, know. My my mom sat me down and she's like, "What the hell are you doing? <laughs> what is this?" You're saying cuss words. You're acting like an asshole. <laughs> you're you're doing all this outrageous shit. You're gonna lose your job for one, and then what are you gonna do? You're gonna you're not gonna get hired anywhere because they're gonna Google your goddamn name and, and then see that you're a maniac. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Then we, like we got into like monetizing the content and and uh, getting a little more business minded, and she's seen like, oh, okay, this kid's making a crack at it. So. I'll leave him be. We'll see how this goes. Let's see how this plays out. And uh, fucking, it, I just, and that motivated me too. It's like, basically she said that you shouldn't do this. And when, you know, your mom or your parents, almost like that rebellious teenager came out mm. and when your mom tells you, you're not supposed to do these things. It's like, well, I think I can. <laughs> right. Maybe I should go do it now or at least try it. <laughs> yeah. If it's pissing if it's pissing off you and making a certain group of people happy, I think I'm, oh, excuse me, doing exactly what I need to be doing. On to something, right? Yeah. Yeah. These are the facts. Mm -hmm. You know, this is a question that I've never asked anybody before, but I figured I'd throw it in there and, you know, it could flop or it could go good. Uh, have you ever had a paranormal experience in your life? Dude, I fucking know. Mm -mm. Okay. I don't, I don't. I might have, I don't know, but I'm terrified of ghosts and I don't oh, really? want any of that shit to attach itself to me. I don't know <laughs> if it's happened to me. I refuse to. That's funny you bring that up. Me and my cousin were just talking about that and he was telling me about this ghost that used to haunt him when he was living at his dad's house. I'm like, dude, don't start talking about that shit because fucking... Don't invite him in here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude, I don't need some fucking... You know, someone who got murdered on your farmland all of a sudden waking up because you said some hocus pocus bullshit that, oh, and now this fucking guy is riding shotgun with me back to fucking Edmonton and I, I got to <laughs> house this spirit that's an asshole. Oh, my God. Yeah, it is scary, man, because you never know. Like, you don't want to. That's the thing. Like, you never know what you're going to say that could trigger something because it's such an unknown realm, so to speak. Yeah, dude, they're like fucking, you can't fight them. No. You can't, it's a it's a lose-lose situation and win-win for them, you know? Yeah, all they have to do is like blow air in your ear and you're terrified and you can't do anything to, to retaliate. Yeah. the fuck am I going to do? Grab a vacuum and suck it up and then yeah. ship it to Kansas or something? Like <laughs> Throwing I, it through the air. <laughs> yeah, and like trying, but like they, they win every time. <laughs> oh my God. I have a couple of things uh, before we wrap up. This is sort of a segment based uh, question, a series of, of statements, and I'll, I'll read them out and we'll sort of just see what your first reaction is. So this first one, an NFT featuring Homer Simpson as Pepe the Frog was sold for $320,000 in 2018. 
in 2018. And this card was, uh, it was in the format, same format as a Pokemon card. Um, just curious, what are your thoughts on NFTs and, and what do you make of this, this ridiculous sale, in my opinion? <laughs> My initial reaction wants to say I hate them and I, I despise this whole new crypto online experience, but I love the fact that there's some uh, creative genius that sat there and thought like, hmm, this would be funny. I should sell it to rich retards that are going to buy this. And then this happens. So it's like almost like a it's like a. It's like the artist is winning the wealth transfer, you know? They're mm. like making a billion dollars off of these guys that want to be like, look at this. I have a JPEG of a <laughs> sleepy ape. And you know, okay, that's cool. And I get to go in a Discord server with Kanye West. Is that, oh, is that actually Kanye West in the Discord server, you dipshit? Uh, like, I don't know. It drives me nuts because that seems to be... The only thing you hear, it, bro, you got to get into NFTs, bro. It's NFTs are the wave, bro. They're fire. new internet, man. Yeah. They're like, dude, you get this NFT when you go into the metaverse, everybody's going to think that you're fly. Like, oh I don't want to be in the metaverse. <laughs> I feel like it, it's, it's this pretentious attitude that people who are into NFTs, they act like they know something you don't, but like it makes them a genius somehow. Yeah. It's, it's very pretentious. Yeah, they're the new snobby art collectors. Oh, the digital art snobs. Yeah, yeah, dweebs. Dweebs. <laughs> we got to make an acronym. Digital web, we'll, we'll figure out the rest uh, in, in, in the future. Speaking of Kanye West, uh, this is strange. Kanye West once spontaneously wrapped his entire album to Seth Rogen in the back of a limousine while he sat in disbelief. It took him two hours as Seth Rogen sat in silence. I feel like this two hours probably felt a lot longer. I mean, that is just odd to me. Dude, I would be so pissed. You'd be pissed. I don't want to, you know, like, I'd probably leave. I could get, like, that celebrity fame shit doesn't really do anything. For, like, I, I don't get fascinated. Unless it's, like, anybody in Motley Crue. Uh, then I would be, like, I'd let Tommy Lee drum the whole album of Shout Out the Devil to me, and I would sit there in awe. But it's like to have Kanye rap the, an album start to, I'd just throw myself out of that limousine. <laughs> <laughs> what would happen if you didn't like the, the music you were hearing and he asked for your opinion? Would you, would you be able to tell him? Uh, yeah, I'd probably give like a sarcastic kind of, oh, wow, that was great. And, and just like everybody else would probably be able to sense that I'm being sarcastic. But those guys are usually so full of themselves. We'd be like, yeah, you think so? Like, dude, mm. so good. You should, you should hold court at, a, at like the local mall and just wrap this whole album start to finish and make other people stand there for two hours. <laughs> Goes home all puffed up and happy. I could see it working. <laughs> yeah. The last one, in 2012, the Olympic Committee in Kuwait accidentally played the fictional Kazakhstan national anthem from Borat at a medal ceremony rather than the actual Kazakhstan national anthem. This almost sounds like a Danger Cats prank to me in the making. Is this true? This is apparently true. Yeah, 2012. <laughs> Kazakhstan is the greatest country. <laughs> I don't think this dude would have survived cancel culture. This dude would have been hung if this would have happened today, I think. I think it's so funny how well Sasha Baron Cohen has, like, trolled Kazakhstan that, like, the Kazakh president. Is it a president or prime minister that they have? That's a good question. I wish I knew the answer. I'd look so smart. Uh, hey, that's how much we give a shit about Kazakhstan. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but like when he put out that film, they thought it was real and they were like sending over the Kazakh leaders to do like press conferences and uh, to say like, no, this guy is not a Kazakh. And they, were <laughs> like, and they just kind of let the, him do his thing and be like, yeah, OK, not a problem. Have at her. Welcome to America. <laughs> oh, my God. Did you ever see the video where they showed people in Kazakhstan clips of Borat and they chased them out out of the area? It was ridiculous. Really? Everything they do to combat the movie just makes them seem more like the movie. And that's the, the most unfortunate part about the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's genius on his behalf, you know? It is. That's, that's crazy, man. I couldn't imagine that... you. you could you imagine like the North American athletes or anybody that's watched the film and they're like, wait a minute, I know this. Yeah. 
It's real. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Where do I know this from? This is familiar. <laughs> It'd almost be like, remember when Fergie sang the national anthem at the All Star, the NBA All Star game? So and everybody's bad. Everybody's biting their cheeks, like not to laugh at it. <laughs> so bad. I, that, that might be worse than this now that I'm actually thinking of it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god that's funny man uncle hack this has been fun man thank you so much for taking the time i really appreciate it i want to give a big shout out to uncle hack for stopping by the podcast today and a shout out to nick mcquick as you could see in the background there uh mcquick uh a guy who i used to know from working at the comedy club one of the first and only people in the comedy scene out here who was really just genuinely cool to me and took me in. Uh, we have some really cool stuff in the works. I have a little collab on the way with Danger Cats um, that is on top of this podcast, which I'm excited about. We're going to be working on that next week. So a lot of cool stuff coming from this end and from the in-person end. Just a lot of cool stuff coming in general when it comes to content. I'm also thinking of a way to revamp the live music reaction stream. You guys probably remember I did a couple of these. It got to the point after like the third or fourth one that I realized if I do this like every month even, this is just gonna start getting repetitive. And it's, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna be as cool and as fresh as when I first started. So I'm actually gonna start bringing guests I'm going to start working on different segments, uh, different maybe live performances and ways to have it like that and sort of methods to have artists actually react to these things with me, which I think would be really, really cool because I think that just me sitting there shooting the shit for a couple hours, it's fun from time to time, but I know it's going to lose its appeal because it's going to become repetitive and... You know, that's one of the hardest things about this podcasting content, man, is because you want to release so frequently, you have to do it almost every week. And it's kind of like that mafia mentality of like, you're only as good as your last envelope. It's like with this, you're only as good as your last podcast. And once a week or so goes by, you could have had an interview with the president where you sat down for two and a half hours and, and found out all the secrets about the presidency. But after about a week and a half, two weeks, that goes away and then you're forced to do something else you know you look at a game like music or you look at a game like acting on the, you know unless it's a tv show like for movie actors you do one big project you know you release an album and artists can get by for two 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 and a half years off an album it, you know it takes six months to a year probably to put together and it's really intensive work um but podcasting it's that hamster wheel man and it's very hard to enjoy life when you're on a hamster wheel and that was my whole game plan for 2022 to really figure out how to slow it down, how to step off of it every once in a while and how to keep things original. Because if you're constantly running on that wheel, it, it's like living paycheck to paycheck, like living idea to idea for the podcast. Um, I think it's really about planning out, saving, having a reserve of ideas, sort of banking guest ideas and possibilities and booking things in advance. Uh, so that's a whole lot, a whole big long way to say I'm working on making all this stuff better and just continuing to expand it. So I'm really, really excited about that. If you enjoyed this, please make sure to subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, YouTube, Stitcher Radio, new podcasts every single week. The YouTube content is expanding as well. So there's a bunch of new stuff that is coming. Make sure to follow me on all socials at Cassius Morris. And thanks so much for tuning into this episode, man. I'm really looking forward to the next one. And we'll catch up with you guys very soon. Rock on.